Hello team, it's Thursday Q&A with me Phil and we're just a few minutes later than normal because I couldn't get the network to work here. All my cameras disappeared. Anyway, I rebooted everything. That's what you have to do, isn't it? Just reboot and guess what? It's all working again. So welcome everyone. It's Thursday Q&A and that means it's your chance to talk about anything DJing with me, with the team. We're here to help. We'll answer as many questions as, as we can about your DJing. Could be about your music, could be about your gear, could be about your tricks and techniques and playing and it could be about getting gigs, could be about promoting yourself, whatever you want to help with in your DJing, we're here for you for the next half hour or so. Uh, so for those of you that don't know about us, we're Digital DJ Tips, the people behind Rock the Dance Floor, the best-selling book on Amazon on how to DJ, but we're also the people behind DigitalDJTips.com, the YouTube channel and the Facebook page or group you might be watching this on, and uh, all the DJ courses that we sell. We've actually just launched a DJ course today uh, called House mixing mastery it's our house mixing course only available to our students at the moment to our community members at the moment but it will be being launched publicly next month so we're really excited about that new course uh, but uh, so that's that's who we are that's what we do if you enjoyed today all i would ask is please share it and if you're watching the replay on youtube and thinking why, what's this dude on about? Why don't we just get some, you know, some content? Well, look, this is a show. There's going to be a lot of this. There's going to be a lot of chatting to people. We've got a comment camera over there where we, uh, we interact with the community and so on. This is a show you're watching. It's a recording of a show. So join us live, you know, click notify, uh, click subscribe, click show these pages first. And then when we go live, you'll be able to join us live and not, not have to watch the recording. Uh, right, okay then. So today, the gear we have in the studio today is the... Uh, the DDJ 400, which I've been doing some recording, some some techno training on actually today. Uh, so that's the the gear we have. The software obviously is Record Box, uh, although you can't really see the whole of the Record Box screen there for some bizarre reason. Uh, that might be something I can fix. Uh, so the software we've got is Record Box. So if you uh, are wanting to uh, talk talk about Record Box, for instance, we've got it all loaded up and ready and waiting here. Uh, so there we go. That's a little bit better, isn't it? A bit more central now. Uh, so that's what we've got set up, but we will honestly love to help you with absolutely anything. Uh, I'm here. I'm free. You know, this is the end of my working day. It's just like going down the pub and having a talk about DJ for half an hour. So talking about that, let's see who's here today. Uh, so uh, for those of you that are new to all this, this is the comment cam. This is where we get to say hello to everyone. Uh, so hi to Dave. Always like to say hello to our first person in. Uh, and uh, PB says, I'm late. Yeah, well, I was late as well. So, hey, no worries. Uh, Dave's putting out his first ever Twitch stream tonight. So that's really good news. Hello to everyone watching us on Twitch. Hi to Nikki. Uh, hi to Fernando uh, and everyone else arriving. Yeah, I would be nervous too, Dave, but it'll all go OK, my friend. Uh, okay, so um, uh, Charlie says, I truly look forward to these Q&As. Oh, you're very, very welcome. Uh, hello to Jorge in Portugal. Uh, and uh, Stephen says, it's a super hot Thursday in the UK. So that's good. You never know what you're going to get, do you? Uh, so I'm glad you're having uh, good weather there. We're actually down in Gibraltar, for those of, those of you who hear the English accent and think, what part of the UK are they in? We're in Gibraltar, which is right down in the very south of Spain, uh, it, with, uh, within view of... Uh, within view of Africa and so on. So we're, we're in the heat as well. Uh, yes, it has already been a week since I uh, turned on that camera and said, happy Tuesday, everyone. And it was actually Thursday. It's incredible, isn't it? Uh, all right, then. Let's do your questions. So, you know, as I say, it could be about anything. could be about the gear that I've just shown you there. could be about anything going on in the DJ world. Serato has just added DJ MV10 support. Uh, Virtual DJ has just improved its stems. Uh, we've been talking about live streaming. Uh, we've been talking about black artists shaping dance music this week uh, on Digital DJ Tips. So it could be any of the stories that we've been covering over there that you want to talk about today. Uh, really, it's, uh, it's up to you. Uh, so the first question is uh, from Marion, or Marlon, sorry, who says, what's your thoughts on the new Mark Mix Track Pro 3 um, work with Virtual DJ 2020 20 or 21. Okay, so the Mix Track Pro 3 is a great little controller. We really love it. We use it a lot here. Punches above its weight, feels really well made. Uh, so we, the Pro 3 FX, I'm talking about the new one. The old one was really good as well. Uh, and the implementation in Virtual DJ is really, really good with all controllers. So you'll have no problem using it with Virtual DJ. Uh, so two big ticks there. Don't worry about it. It's, uh, it's a good choice. Um, so uh, Andrew says, I managed to get here on time for once. Yeah, it's me who was late, Andrew. So maybe you were late. Um, so um, DJ Nine Iron says, uh, I am currently just a bedroom DJ. Eventually I want to be mobile. Should I consider getting a laptop now or wait until I'm more ready? 
look, get your gear now, um, you know, unless you want to wait. I mean, obviously, there's going to be no mobile gigs for most people for the foreseeable future, but I wouldn't hold back. You know, a laptop is such a useful thing to have anyway, right? It's why most people are into being laptop DJs because you use it for everything as well, right? So, um, you know, unless there's any reason why you can't, you know, afford to get that laptop now, get it now. It's going to make your life easier. Uh, it's going to make your life a lot easier, I'd say, generally. Uh, so Gustavo says, any chance of you guys putting together DJ courses with a price point below $100? Uh, well, in our sales, some of our courses do drop to below $100. So next time you see the sale, which doesn't happen very often, I think the next one is going to be uh, the, you know, the Black Friday, Thanksgiving kind of time. Uh, that's the time, if you can ha hold out that long. Uh, to get something from us. So thank you for the question. Um, so Jabari says, is the Pioneer DDJ 800 right for Jabari? Well, it's a great controller. Of course, without any more information, we can't tell you the answer to that, but uh, it's a great controller. Uh, all right then, so uh, this is, uh, it's great. Some good questions coming in already. Uh, Keith says, Spotify still works with Algorithms DJ. It should have been stopped. I know, I know. Let's just not say anything, eh? It's like the kids. You've got kids, you know, that it's, it's their bedtime. They suddenly go quiet and hide in the corner, don't they? And hope you haven't spotted them to send them to bed. Uh, maybe, maybe Spotify hasn't spotted that it's still turned on an algorithm. Uh, so, <laughs> so anyway, um, all right then. So the next question is uh, Charlie who says, I got my PV6 and now my streaming sounds amazing. Cheers to you and you, uh, you're the truth. The PV6 is this little thing here, says Phil, going off camera just to pull it out. One of, the, one of the things that's still available, uh, because it's so hard to get audio interfaces at the moment because everyone's buying them for home working and stuff. So I recommended this to Charlie and Charlie says, let me just put it away again. Charlie says it's really helped and Charlie's streams are now sounding awesome. So I'm glad, glad to have helped you. Uh, all right then, Will, I'm looking for a recommendation for an upgrade from the DDJ400. That's the controller we have here today. Uh, any, any suggestions? Just get something that's a lot better, like a DDJ800 or 1000. Don't just get another controller around the same price point. There's never any real, real need to do that and real reason to do that. Uh, all right then, so uh, I was actually watching your house mixing mastery course when I got notification of this live session. So far, excellent course, says Frederick. Oh, well, you're very, uh, you're very welcome, Frederick. Uh, I was mentioning, if you've just joined us, we literally just launched our new course, which is called House Mixing Mastery, but it's only available to our, uh, our members at the moment. Uh, but it's a course on how to mix house music. Uh, and if you're interested in that and you're not a member, then it's going to be out in about a month publicly. Uh, so, all right then. Um, what has happened to the to the DNSC 2000 single controller from Denon, says Dave. I can't find one anywhere. Yeah, I don't think they, they make them anymore. That could be why. Um, so Queso is thinking about the Pioneer DDJ800 or the Roland DJ505 um, or the Denon MC7000. Um, is there a problem investing in that controller, the MC7000, because it's four channels? Well, no, four channels is always useful to have. You know, most people only DJ on two channels, but the four channels, three and four can be used sometimes for an acapella looping underneath, sometimes for a drum loop underneath, just to have tracks ready in case what you're doing doesn't work and you need to mix out quickly, and also to plug external gear in. So it is useful to have the extra channels. So I wouldn't say there's ever a disadvantage in having the extra channels, apart from the size of the unit, of course, because the bigger the unit, the more channels, or the more channels, the bigger the unit. Uh, I just got the house course as well, says someone over on our Facebook group. Uh, I can't wait to get started. Lots of our members on here today, of course. Uh, so uh, lots of you talking about Spotify still working. Shush, let's just keep quiet about that, eh? Um, so uh, Regess says, as a brand new DJ, uh, I uh, am overwhelmed with where to start. How can I easily get a ton of music in a mass download? How should I organize files in Serato? Right, firstly, do not get a ton of music in a mass download. You don't know your tracks if you do that. It's much better to assemble your music slowly and listen to each track as you add it to your collection, work out how to mix with it. You don't need that many tracks to play a gig. If you get booked to play one hour, that's what, 20 tracks at the most? So you need 40 tracks. So if you can add five tracks to your collection for the next two months, you'll have enough to play your first gig. And that'll give you two months to practice and to get good enough to play that gig. So don't think that way. You know, you shouldn't be hoarding music. If you don't know every track in your collection, in a very real sense, you don't actually own that music. Uh, so join Digital DJ Tips. If you click the link, uh, and I can also give you the link actually, but uh, if you just click the link on the website anywhere, go to here, 
djtips.co slash join or go to the website uh, and click anywhere on the website where it says get your free DJ gear guide and Amazon bestseller. Uh, click here uh, and it will uh, pop up this box. Sign up to Digital DJ Tips uh, and I will give you a free copy of this book as a download. And this book is the best, best place to start. This book will talk you through everything you need to do around the five big areas of DJ. And the five big areas of DJ that you have to get good at, it's not just about the mixing, it really isn't. Uh, uh, you can't see that under the light. Uh, uh, here, no, nope, can't really see that. Gear, music, techniques, playing out and promoting yourself. It's all covered in there and I'd love you to have that free copy, uh, uh, Regez. So, Head over there, join Digital DJ Tips. Let us help you uh, know what to do next. Don't feel overwhelmed and don't hoard music. Uh, there's no point doing that. Assemble your collection slowly. Uh, uh, so Colin says, I just picked up a Hercules DJ Impulse, uh, Hercules Impulse 500 and I got uh, berated on the Serato Facebook page as it wasn't an FX Pro, blimey. Oh, there you go. So someone's bought a controller that isn't a mixed track and has got berated for it, wow. Uh, it's a great controller, that one you've got there, the, uh, the the Impulse 500. We've been using it a lot. I took it to the top of a mountain. Did anyone see our top of the mountain live stream? Hit the likes and hearts if you did. It was an awful lot of fun. Uh, we went to the top of a mountain in the in the uh, the weekend just gone, uh, and uh, we we filmed a live stream. We managed to get a, a, a just about get a strong enough signal up there at the top of a like 1,500 meter mountain, uh, and uh, film. Uh, film right from the very top of there. It was uh, it was awesome. Steve and myself uh, had a lot of fun. Uh, it wasn't the best musical live stream in the world. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth there, but uh, it was uh, it was awesome. Uh, I could got a little screenshot of it here actually. Uh, here it is. Let's show you what it looked like. There you go. That's us. You can see it on uh, YouTube. It's called Mountain Beats Live on our YouTube channel, and we were stood behind that wall, but behind us was a sheer drop and there was no platform behind the wall. We just had our feet perched on stones and stuff. So it was a bit hairy, but uh, a lot of fun. Uh, all right then, so, um, so uh, more of your questions. That's what I'm here for. If you've just joined us, we're answering all your questions for another 10, 15 minutes or so. Uh, and uh, so uh, keep them coming. Um, Phil, can you help when live streaming on YouTube, do you have to have a set list? Okay. Let's talk a little bit about live streaming on YouTube or live streaming in general. The first thing I have to do is point you to an article that we published uh, just last week because it's all in here. Uh, it's on Digital DJ Tips. It's called The Ultimate Guide to DJ Live Streaming in 2020. And we talk through absolutely everything you need to live stream. Uh, we talk through the gear you need, the cameras you need, the software you need, the accessories you need, where to live stream for, from, how to do it from your phone, how to do it from your laptop, how to do it without those things. Uh, we, we talk through everything. So do go and have a look at this article on Digital DJ Tips uh, and it will help you to work out a lot of this stuff. Um, we talk about copyright, uh, promoting. It's a, it's a big article, spent a lot of time on that one. So the question was, can you help, um, do I need to have a set list for streaming on YouTube? So you don't need to have a set list for streaming. There's two reasons why I think it's a good idea. One, when you're live streaming, you've got a lot to think about. You've got comments, you've got to check your streaming software is working. So you don't want to be staring at your computer all the time. Now you will do that all the time anyway if you haven't planned a set because you're always thinking, what do I play next, what do I play next? Add on all the stuff you've got to do for live streaming. Doesn't make you look very engaged. Doesn't make you look very entertaining to your audience. Much better to plan the stream and then you can spend more time looking at the camera, talking, reading requests off your phone, reading shout outs off your phone or whatever. But the second reason is that YouTube will block your live stream worldwide if you play tracks that are not allowed to be used on YouTube. But there is a way around it. It's never fail safe. Uh, it's not ideal, but what you can do is put all the tracks that you, you're wanting to play uh, in one long track, you like make one long video. So just put any old video on it at all uh, and output it. So you use Movie Maker or iMovie or any anything uh, to put all the music you want to play in like an hour long video with just a loop of any old video on there. Output it, upload it to YouTube unlisted and YouTube will tell you whether the music you've used will be uh, all right or not. If you get a, an amber dot, next to each tune. It will look at all the tunes and it'll give you a list. Uh, if you get an amber dot, it means you can't monetize the stream. Of course you can't monetize the stream. You're using copyrighted music, but uh, it will play that music. Uh, it won't block your stream. If you get a red dot, it means it will block the stream. So, you know, you've got to run the music by YouTube 
you've got to run it by them first. Uh, and then you know that you're hopefully going to be all right when you live stream. So for both those reasons, I would practice your set for sure. Uh, all right then. So um, do you have any tips for a beginner uh, how to mix Euro dance smoothly? Look, you're going to want open format. You're going to want quick mixing to mix any kind of pop music uh, because you can't mix it like house. House music is made for mixing. It's got intro beats and outro beats. And so you're going to want to learn quick mixing techniques in order to do that. So quick mixing is when you learn how to use effects and loops and uh, some of, and sync to slam very quickly between tracks uh, and to make it sound nice when you're doing that. So um, a couple of recommendations for you. The first one, we have got a course that teaches this kind of thing. It's called Mixing Power Skills and you'll find it over on the courses page on Digital DJ Tips. It's all about mixing anything into anything every time. So this is going to help you with house, hip hop, pop, rock, reggae, bass, funk, disco, classics, acapellas, all that kind of thing. So definitely the kind of mixing that you're going to want to do is covered by that course. But secondly, I recommend you join a DJ download pool. Something like DJ City or BPM Supreme or Zip DJ, any of those, because they'll give you DJ edits. And if you listen to a lot of DJs nowadays, certainly very big in the UK, they're not playing the original versions of songs, they're playing DJ edits that have bits put at the beginning and end to make it easier to mix with those tunes. And you also get tools, you get acapellas and beat tools and clean versions and short versions. It makes that kind of mixing a lot easier. So find a download pool that's got the kind of music you like and see what versions they've got of tunes that might make it easier for you to mix with those tunes. Thank you very much for the questions. Great question, that one. Uh, Klaus says, did you see the new DJ Angelo Stems video? Doesn't that pretty much prove that Stems separation in DJ and v v DJ is ready for the dance floor, regardless of the small audible artifacts? Uh, we did see the DJ, Ange DJ Angelo video. DJ Angelo is one of our tutors in our Scratch course, by the way, uh, and it's absolutely brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. So go and look at Algorithm's page to watch this video Angelo has made on, a, on just an iPad. It really, really is world class. He's a great DJ. We're very privileged to, to work with Angelo. And I agree with you, Klaus. It does. It's, the, these features are great. In fact, as we covered on the site uh, this week, a virtual DJ has just improved the way it works uh, with stems. It's given you new controls and stuff, and it sounds even better now. Uh, I did a little video on Friday about that. It's on our YouTube page if you want to see me demoing that, that stuff. Um, what tip or feature that not many people know about uh, on Rekordbox would you like to share with us? What a great question. So on Rekordbox, what tip or feature? I think it's probably going to be over in the export section of Rekordbox. And I think I'm going to go for uh, tagging. I'm going to go for the way that you can use the tags to really uh, drill down uh, in your tunes and add uh, tags for all kinds of things. So Rekordbox in your library here can do a lot more than you can do in most software. You can add tags to tunes. And if you add tags to tunes, you can say things like, the genre is an obvious one, but you can also have, if you look down, it's hard for you to see this on the screen, unfortunately, and I can't zoom in on this screen. So if you're watching on a phone or something, just pinch and look on the right hand side. You see, we've got the genres here, acid house, deep house, techno, you can add your own, but also we've got components. So you can have the different instruments. You can say this has got a synth or a vocal or a piano or, a, or you can add things like, like um, uh, you know, um, I'm just trying to remember the name of it, a saxophone. Like a lot of songs have got a saxophone in. You can also add situation, like this is for the main room or for build-ups or for the lounge or for bar sets or for chill-out sets. And so with all these things here, you can really organise your music collection in a way that you just, whoops, Let's go here for a minute. In a way that you just can't do with other software. So, you know, you can have stuff that she's really good for a warm up and have it all tagged there in the software across all genres. Every song you've ever got with a saxophone in, you just click the tag and they're all there. So you can play a little saxophone mini set. Um, you, can, you can tag instrumentals and vocals. The tagging in Rekordbox is absolutely world class and no other software comes near, which makes sense because this software was originally just library software. It wasn't originally for controllers. Uh, this software was originally for preparing your music so that you could then go out with a USB stick and play in a club, which is why the mode we're in now hasn't got decks on it. It's called export mode. It's just got the ability to kind of load your tracks, get the tags sorted out on your tracks, uh, and, uh, and that's it. So um, nowadays, of course, we use it as proper DJ software for this, but it, it didn't always be that way. 
and that's why it's got really good library features because that's all it used to do so you'd expect that wouldn't you uh, so there there's a tip or trick in record box for you so uh, i'm scanning down the questions now uh, alfie says how similar is the functionality on the ddj 400 and uh, and the club star pioneer cdjs would i struggle hugely if i was to jump straight across to cdjs well the good news is the layout on this is quite similar so the, the, the way the looping section and the memory cues and stuff work up here is exactly the same. That's a big plus. The, uh, the effects section here is very, very stripped down compared to a club mixer, but nonetheless, it works in a similar way. So you, you will feel a little bit more at home on club CDJs, even though this is a tiny little controller, having got used to this, especially with looping, especially if you work out how to use these things called memory cues, which are part of the way the uh, club CDJs uh, can remember parts of your song. That said, the main thing that's going to be different playing on a club system to playing on a controller, even nowadays when club systems do have sync and stuff, is that you're going to need to be able to manually beat mix. You can't go into a club and not manually beat mix. You never know what equipment you're going to find. So as long as you can teach yourself to manually beat mix, you're going to be okay. Now again, in the book, we talk you through how to do that, how to manually beat mix. And of course, in our courses, the first thing we teach in our complete DJ course uh, is manual beat mixing because you need to be able to count time and manually beat mix. You just do. So that would be the main thing. If you can teach yourself manual beat mixing, you'll find that jump up to club gear reasonably easy. Uh, so hi to Jonas, who says greetings from a sunny cast out in Sweden. Uh, greetings to you as well, Jonas. Uh, so the next question, I'm just scanning and scanning and scanning. Um, is what's your view on the inner fader? So the inner fader is a fader is a fader that you can swap out. I'm looking for an inner fader enabled mixer here, uh, and I can't see one. Steve steals Steve steals all the inner fader mixes because he's our scratch DJ. Um, so what the question is? What's your opinion on aftermarket cro aftermarket cross faders? Are there any others other than inner fader? There are. I can't remember the name of the other reasonable uh, brand but um, yeah they're good they're good they're worth adding I mean Pioneer has Magvel faders and stuff which are really really good uh, so you know if you want to add a inner fader and your gear will let you and you're very serious about scratching do it otherwise the faders that come with your gear are very likely to be fine for you uh, one or two more questions then um, Let's, um, this is all live folks, so I am just, oh, Lee's got a PV6 as well that I recommended and says it's great too, that's good. Good to see us helping people. Uh, hi to Stu, always good to have you here, Stu. Can you give a crash course in DMX cables? <laughs> I'd love to, Matthew, but not right here, right now. We are thinking of making a lighting course, actually, so if you want a lighting course, let us know in the comments. The more people ask for it, the quicker it is likely to be made. How do I make my Zoom gigs really special and unique for my uh, for my clients. Uh, we published a post on Digital DJ Tips about uh, making your Zoom gigs really special. Um, in fact, it was by our finance guy, um, Juanmi. So if you search Zoom in Digital DJ Tips, search at the top of the website, how to DJ Zoom parties, seven tips for awesome live streams. So go find that article and that should help you with that. Uh, hello to Mark. Nice to have you here, Mark, as always. Um, what studio monitors uh, would you recommend for a beginner who's just bought a DDJ 400? Great question. The ones we use, and I'll, un I'll unplug one of them for you to show you, are these little things. They're, they're made by um, IK Multimedia. They're called iLoud. And you get two of them. Uh, one of them you plug your controller in, and the other one you plug a lead from that one to, 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 to this one. So they're really nice. They sound really good for the money, and they're very small. Work well in a small bedroom. I reckon if you've got a DDJ 400, you're probably practicing somewhere small. That's what we recommend. They're not the cheapest, but they're really well made, uh, and they sound great. Uh, and we use them in the studio. The reason we keep you know, very small monitors here in the studio is that we can't have it too loud in here anyway. They do go quite loud, by the way. Uh, but, you know, because we always got microphones on and we're filming, the music's actually very quiet in studios when people are doing DJ demos. I bet you didn't know that, but um, generally DJs who are recording have got the music very, very low if they're using microphones as well. Uh, are you ever going to do videos on showcasing on how to show how to mix hip hop? Well, there's an awful lot of hip hop stuff in our scratch course, uh, but it's a good suggestion. Thank you for that. 
Leo, has your team experienced any issues with syncing libraries with different Rekordbox versions? There's been an awful lot of trouble with cloud sync and library syncing Rekordbox full stop since version 6. Our advice now, hold off version 6 until they got it right, until they hit 6.1. Um, so we've heard so many people having issues there. So I, uh, I guess that might be part of the issue with you that you're, you know, you're, you're trying to use um, version 6. Lee says, I'm loving the house mixing mastery course. Sorry, this is terrible for people who can't get it because they're not our members. But this is only for our members right now. It is out next month uh, if you're not a member of Digital DJ Tips uh, in public. Uh, so thank you for that, Lee. That's awesome. Uh, a lot of us make the hoarding mistake. This is what I was talking about with hoarding music. Some still won't learn that hoarding music won't help you. Look, hoarding music is great if you're a record collector. That's fine, but your DJ music should be very, very pa pared down. You know, these are tools. These are your tools of your trade. You wouldn't have a plumber going out to a job with every toolbox that was ever made. The person takes everything that they need to do the job. And as a DJ, you should only take what you need to do the job. Um, does DJ Pro on MacBook still use Spotify? Yes, it was still working when I tried it the other day. So, uh, so yes, it does. Uh, is it a good idea to sort my music folders by month or make folders for the different keys? Don't do either because you can just click a column in your software. Look, over in DJ software, let's go back to here. You've got columns for the year. That's now sorted by year. You've got columns for the key. You've got columns for the genre. You can very easily sort by those things. So I don't think it's worth having actual physical folders for that kind of thing at all. Whoops, there's the controller again. Uh, at all in your DJ software. Uh, or in your file structure or anything. Some people like to put every year's track in one folder and then the next year start a new one, but I don't even do that. I just having one flat folder for all your music, sort it all out in your software. There's no need to do stuff that, that a click will do for you anyway, in my view. The original Dr. Shade said amazing views on that mountain. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I wish I'd found your Rock the Dance Floor years ago before I uh, spent money on Danny Rampling's book. Oh, Danny's book's awesome. I know Danny. He's a good, he's a good lad. Uh, this is Danny's book. Everything you need to know about DJing and success. But it's really old now. It's like totally out of date. That's, what, that's the reason we wrote this. There's nothing new out there. There's nothing with digital gear and controllers. That's the reason we wrote our book. Uh, but that was a great book in its day. Uh, Danny's book. Big, big ups to Danny. Hope you're well, mate. Uh, all right then, but thank you for that. Uh, thank you for that thumbs up for the book, Dave. Um, DJ Mike says, in my opinion, the Hercules is better than the Impulse. I think you meant better than the uh, mixed track. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so yes, they're, they're both great controllers. You're on a winner, whichever one of those you've got. Um, Rob says, I've also got the new Impulse 500 and I love it too. Nikki says, Phil, I've got a question. It's one I don't think I'm going to be answer. I'm going to be able to answer, Nikki. How do I get my wife to let me upgrade my DJ Pioneer XDJ RR without her going mad? Get yourself a gig that will pay for it, is my advice to you there. Um, so um, that's my advice. Yeah, get a gig that you will uh, that you will be able to say, hey, I've just earned this money. I'm going to buy a new controller with it. Uh, I've just upgraded to the Pioneer XDJ RX2. Good choice. Yeah, you've got a great uh, a great system there. Uh, DJ Mike's technical question, what do you think is better to stream with? A sound card like the NI Tractor A6 or a live mixer with USB? I think they're both exactly the same. It's just about features. The sound quality is going to be fine with both of them. Uh, I was wondering, says Paul, how to find out about licenses for party DJing and where to apply uh, for weddings and the cost of using music, etc. If you're DJing in a venue that has got uh, you know, a door fee, a public venue. If you're DJing in a public venue, they, they have to have a music license in order for you to be able to DJ there. It's their job to provide it. If you're playing a private party, you need to have that license, which means normally it's not up to you. You don't need to get that license. Obviously, it's different in all, um, in all uh, countries. It's not quite the same everywhere, but that's the general principle. Uh, okay, I think... Folks, one or two more very quick ones and then we're going to have to shoot. Uh, anything that we haven't been able to answer here, my team will get to underneath. Uh, Buxy D says, what a great job you're doing. You're very welcome. Uh, Paul says, it's the first time I've managed to catch you live. I normally watch the playback. You truly are a wealth of information. It's because I'm old, Paul. Um, DJ Dino Blend says, record box is amazing. All our Serato users have to input those tags manually. Yes, it's true. Uh, it is really, really good. Um, all right then, uh, one or two more then. Uh, I'm just scanning for something that's new. 
Uh, what's the best door to make our own acapellas on? You don't need a door, you need something that will separate the acapella from everything else. Just download Virtual DJ Home. It's free. And that will let you separate the acapella with the new stems function. Uh, no need to do anything more than that. Uh, it won't sound studio perfect, but it'll be good enough for DJing with. Um, and Danny says, if you had 1500 quid, that's about $1,700 people, uh, and you had in your pocket and you had Technics 1200 GR and CDJ 2000s, would you stop with Pioneer or buy a Denon Prime 4? Wow. If I had had 1500 to spend and I already had Technics and CDJs, would I stop with Pioneer or buy a Denon Prime 4? It's hard to answer that one. Um, nope, I can't answer that one with just that information. They're both really, really great, great systems. Uh, hi to our friends at Extender Mix. Uh, and Extender Mix is saying we've got loads of Eurodance, uh, including intro outro versions. I can also recommend Extender Mix. In fact, that was the name that was on the tip of my tongue for exactly that style of music. So if you want to download Paul, head over to Extender Mix with an X at the beginning. Uh, thank you very much. I hope you're well, guys. Uh, and one more then. Uh, this is from Pete, who just says, hi, watching you while making dinner. Keep up the good work. Uh, thank you, Pete. We'll just find one more question. Uh, this is from Jorge. Hi, Phil. Do you recommend Platinum Notes? Do you use it? Uh, and I do recommend Platinum Notes. I can probably show it to you on this computer here uh, because uh, I've got it loaded on here. I use it all the time. So Platinum Notes is a little piece of software that will let you take a... Here it is. Not very interesting to look at right now, but it'll let you take a um, track. So let's just find a track that I can drag. Maybe I've got something in my downloads. No, I won't even try and do it. It always goes wrong when I do that. Anyway, it lets you drag tracks in here and it will analyze them. And what it'll do is find out if those tracks are over compressed, they're just, there's not enough dynamic range, or whether they've got digital distortion in them, or whether they're, the key's wavering, because maybe it was a rip from a record and the record was a bit dodgy, uh, or the volume's too low or too high, and it will attempt to correct all those things and give you a new output track with all that stuff corrected. Uh, and I use it a lot because I like all the tunes in my collection to be at the same volume, and also to have some of those other things fixed in them. Especially with a lot of modern music that's very, very over compressed, it's very loud. Tracks are getting louder and louder and louder. And so there's no quiet points in them. And on the dance floor, you don't really want that. On the dance floor, it's a good sound system. You want tracks to have quiet and loud. So it puts a bit of that dynamic range back in them. Some people love it, some people hate it. I've used it for six or seven years and I love Platinum Notes. It's by the same people who make Mixed in Key, by the way. Uh, it's a great investment. As I say, I use it all the time with all my new music. Uh, so, so yeah, I can recommend that. All right then, I've got to leave now, folks. We are... Uh, taking my little daughter camping because it's her eighth birthday this weekend. So I've got to go and uh, get some food down the mall and get the car packed and get everyone out of here. So thank you very much, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, we're back again on Tuesday uh, for Tuesday Tips Live, where we were talking about an industry piece of news or something big or something that people are chatting about over in our communities. Uh, if you want a copy of this book, uh, then you can head over to uh, become a member of Digital DJ Tips, which you can do here. Uh, and our, um, our latest house mixing course is only open to our members. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Uh, so uh, lots of reasons to be a member if you're not already a member. There's the link. It's free, by the way. Uh, and apart from that, you guys have a great weekend and I'll see you on the other side. Uh, get good, get out there and make the moments, people. Uh, and we'll see you very soon. Until then, bye-bye.